again. Can't believe it's been a year since I did my introduction video and that it's been six months since just before I went to Sheffield because it really feels like not long ago and at the same time that like so much has happened. Um, so I guess since it's my one year catch up I, and the, my last vlog with jobs.ac.uk um, I want to talk about finishing up my PhD and how that will go over the next year because I've got a year left or just over a year I'm trying to figure that out um, what I, I'm thinking for afterwards and different possibilities that there are for after a PhD and um, and then I'll tie in with that a conference that I just got back from um, in Copenhagen which was really interesting so pretty much I've got um, yeah a year and a few months left to finish everything and um, I've got to write a couple of papers in that time and I've got to write my thesis but I've also got to finish all my experiments and I've got about eight or so projects that I really want to finish um, but I'm hoping that if I apply for an extension within time then maybe I'll have a couple of extra months so that I have the year and a bit to finish up experiments um, only and then I'll have the, the time after that to write my thesis um, so that it's not a kind of time limit for spending all of my paid time writing. Um, so it is kind of scary that it's all going to be over in like a year and a half or something but um, I'm really optimistic that things are starting to move forward in my project so um, a lot's been happening um, I have some new things that are working a lot better than the old stuff I was doing, so it's really positive. But um, thinking about what to do after a PhD is also a really big task, so thinking whether um, you want to continue in research, you know, do postdoctoral positions, um, and maybe go towards lectureships or um, kind of academic training, or you can go into maybe industry or do extra training for stuff like teaching or, or other a completely different field if, if you're really um, done <laughs> but um, I think with um, postdoctoral training you really have to be motivated in your own research but also know what kind of funding sources are available to you and um, what kind of grants you're eligible for what foundations would fund your research and, and it has to be more specific towards um, a specific niche of research um, and you also need to know what labs are working in your field or a similar field or if you want to change the type of research you're doing where to go from there so a lot of the time you'll be working with either people you've worked with before in terms of collaborators these kind of people or you'll be going to a competitor and then there's maybe conflicts of interest that you have to take into account um, so there are a lot of different options and I think what I've seen from postdoctoral research of people I know is that you have two or three years worth of funding um, and then your contract ends and you have to find a new job and I think um, personally I would like some more stability than that so I think the industrial route could have more security long term so in that kind of area I was at a conference um, last week in Copenhagen for four days um, and it was the European Society of Human Genetics conference and it was a really really nice meeting and um, we had a, the disease I work in, herpes disease, we had a satellite meeting for that with collaborators in the consortium and um, I was able to present my work at that uh, I also had a poster that I was presenting at the main conference and um, there were concurrent sessions that um, you had to kind of choose which uh, lectures you have to go to. I mean, there was 3,000 people or more um, at the conference, and then the speakers, um, there, there must have been six sessions or so going on at once, including then there was corporate satellites with um, different companies. Um, and so this these uh, conferences take place at these massive uh, conference centres where there's yeah, multiple huge rooms and uh, usually one big exhibition room that then all the posters are set up and you can go and visit those. There's um, all the different companies that are from 
uh, sequencing companies to huge companies like Thermo Fisher Scientific and uh, Preparatech and um, yeah, just all these big companies are um, are set up with stalls where they give you you know free pens and USB sticks to to talk to you and try and sell you things. And as a PhD student, then I feel like oh well, I can't choose <laughs> to buy a whole new machine. But it's interesting to hear the different um, options that are available for experiments that you're doing. And so that kind of stuff I found really interesting. And I spoke to a few companies there that hire PhD students or, you know, hire people who've done research and have PhDs or people who are coming out of their however many years of postdoctoral research and want a more stable position. Um, and there are loads of options and all over Europe is still a possibility. Um, but I, I'm enjoying life in the Netherlands and um, now that I've bought an apartment I feel like it's um, the place that I want to be. So um, I'm looking into different options for when I'm finished and going to these conferences and networking a little more uh, is definitely something I would recommend you doing if you are um, in your PhD. Um, so wish me luck for finishing up everything. So if there's anything that wasn't mentioned in my videos um, that you want to know about the Netherlands or about um, getting a PhD in the Netherlands or just anything else, um, leave a comment, uh, get in touch and I'll, I'll try my best to answer your questions. Um, and otherwise, thanks for listening to my videos and uh, see you around. Thank you.